What's going on everybody, it's your boy Dankjadena here, bringing you guys another video, and since my last Pokemon Trading Card Game Online deck profile video did so well, I'm going to make another one. So, today, we have... where is it? Almost losing myself here. We have Zorark Golisopod. So, interesting deck. It's been doing okay so far. Uh, it's kind of died down in the format because of inconsistency and just stuff like that but I've decided to bring it back with this video so uh, without further ado let's get started we play a 3-3 line of the Zorua and Zora GX um, basically this is just for support you could trade to get cards in your hand just allows the deck to be so much more consistent and just better in general. And Riotus Beating can also do a fair bit of damage too. That's 150 with a choice band, which we play a couple of them over there. And uh, we won't be using Trickster, but uh, Trade and Riotus Beating definitely a uh, good uh, card. Um, yeah, that's kind of it with uh, Zork. We also play a 2 2 line of Golisopod GX. Um, probably your main attacker in this deck, 210 HP, first impression, if this Pokemon was on the bench it became your active, it does 90 more damage, so that hits for 120, 150 with the choice band, and then you can, uh, you can pretty much two shot everything, and it's definitely a very, uh, good attack, and then there's armor press, where you take 20 less the next turn, which definitely, uh, helps out, and hits for 100 damage for a grass and double colorless, and then Crossing Cut GX, um, a utility GX move, just allows you to switch and does 150 on top of that. It does do 180 with a choice band, which is a pretty good uh, number to hit for sure. And uh, just gets you out of the active spot, which can be very nice. So we play two of those. One copy Tapu, Tapu Coco with the uh, flying flip. Basically just touch double colorless so you can spread across the field. And it's a free retreater as well, which is very nice one copy of Dawnwing's Necrozma GX, just allowing you with that invasion ability to invade in, bring your Galissapod to the bench, and then attach a float stone to the um, Dawnwing's, retreat it back, and hit for that 120 first impression over and over again. Uh, definitely a versatile card. Uh, it doesn't have the highest uh, hit points, but it's primarily a bench sitter. We play one copy of Mew, just for that Buzzwell matchup, so we can counter it. And, um, yeah, we do play enough Field Blower that this could stay consistent, so that Garp can't really turn it off. And if our Mew gets knocked out, we still play one copy of Mewtwo as well, just for that Psychic attack. Just attach one of the double colorless, and then, uh, get that going. Uh, and last but not least, we have two copies of Tapu Lele GX, pretty standard, just that energy drive, uh, can be used as well in this deck as well as Wonder Tag, which is the important thing, just allowing you to search for supporters, very versatile in any deck. Um, so that's Pokemon, moving on to the trainers, we have four copies of Field Blower, um, we'll just basically getting rid of Garbodor, main reason, uh, maybe some choice bands on the actives, but that's about it. One copy of Heavy Ball, just for consistency, grabbing a uh, Glissopod with that retreat cost of 3, even a Wind Pod because they do have a very high retreat cost, and uh, nope, not Dawn Rings, just checking. So that's Heavy Ball for you guys, one copy of Rescue Stretcher just in case you get uh, like anything knocked out early, just grab it back, as well as your Mew EX if you're playing against a Buzzwall, Rescue Stretcher is very good for that. One copy of Super Rod. Just getting energies and basics back into play helps a lot. Four copies of Ultra Ball, just the standard find a Pokemon. Pretty standard in every single deck. I'm going quite quick through the trainers just because there's not a ton to say about them. Uh, Acerola, we play three, I believe. Yeah, just allowing you to pick up your Glissopod, um, maybe evolve a Wimpod on the bench, bring it bring it up and use that big, uh, big first impression attack over and over and over again. So, a very good card in this deck. Uh, two copies of Bridget, just uh, first turn Bridget is very helpful in this deck, just finding your Wimpods and your uh, Zoroas. Uh, we play three copies of Cynthia, just for uh, draw support. Uh, we don't play Mallow in this list, so Cynthia is kind of all we've got for hoping to hit the cards, as well as Trade. So, uh, a very re reliable card indeed. Uh, four copies of Guzma, just allowing you to. Uh, 
switch your pods out and bring up things from your opponent's bench that you want to knock out. So pretty standard card in every single deck in the meta right now. Uh, three copies of N, once again just like Cynthia, draw more cards. Um, you can also bring them down cards in their hand and then be able to draw into more cards and have a chance of winning the game easier. So that is N. We also play three copies of Sycamore, just a uh, simple discard your hand and draw seven cards. Pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, three copies of Choice Band um, just uh, allows your uh, active Pokemon to do 30 more damage to EXs and GXs, so that can definitely help hit up those big numbers. Uh, and last but not least for the trainers, we have three copies of Floatstone, just attach them to your Dawn Wings, or maybe like, I don't know what else you would attach it to, maybe a Lele, and then just gives them free retreat, so pretty, pretty good card indeed. Uh, four copies of Double Colorless Energy, just powering up that uh, armor press on Glissapod, Crossing Cut GX, and the Ride is Beating on Zoroark, also Psychic on Mewtwo, and uh, I guess Energy Drive on Lele if you really need it. And last but not least, we have five copies of Grass Energy, just um, so that you can actually attack with Glissapod and attach them to Mew and you can attack for Psychic Weakness. So that's the deck, uh, quick look at it from here. So that's the whole list, and let's hop into a versus match and hopefully get that win. Alright. So we're playing against a Psychic deck, as always, because that's running around online right now. Everybody's trying out that nice Malamar. So I think it'll be Malamar Dawn wings. you do want to go first with this deck just so you can get everything set up and evolve quicker. Uh, we hit a mulligan which is unfortunate and they didn't so they can get new cards. Hopefully we can end them out of their uh, nice seven card hand at the end of this. Alright, so we mulliganed only once, which is good, and we can put that draw in the active, but I don't know if there's any outs we can get to get that first turn Bridget in this hand. Hmm. Okay, so I think we're just going to Cynthia to get rid of all of uh, that mess that we had. Uh, drawing into a wind pod and another Zora was nice. Um, hmm. And I think we'll hold off. Hmm. I think we'll hold off on the energy for now so that we don't lose it because that uh, Tauros is a little bit of a danger right now. So I don't know if he's playing that Malamar like I uh, thought he might have because I see Tauros and a Trubbish. So Garbodor's not fun. Our Discord doesn't have any items, and I'll try to keep it that way for this game. And if we could do that, I think we could have this game uh, game in the bag. Alright, so he plays that Mysterious Treasure for another Trubbish. Uh, that's uh, interesting. So, not the uh, normal Psychic type deck you see online. There is a float on a Trubbish, Trace Band on the active, another Mysterious Treasure. Discarding a Lele, so you know he has a draw supporter in hand. Just a tip for all you guys, if they discard things that they could use to get a draw supporter, they have a draw supporter in hand. So playing that Sycamore, getting 7 fresh new cards, 3 Trubbishes in the deck. And that's why we don't attach energy to the active, because he dead. Alright, so we're gonna bench another wind pod. Attach. And then... Cynthia. Hitting one guy squad. Uh, I will field blower away. 
both of their uh, both of their stuff right there, and do a quick trade. Try to get more, uh, more stuff. So 20, 40, 60. I'm only hitting 60 right now. Bench the Lele and search for a supporter. Grab. Hmm. Grab a jet, why not? Just so that I can have that extra 20 damage. It could help in the long run. For, uh. him. But I. Hmm. I won't attack, because he can counter knock me out with Madball GX then. So I'm not gonna attack. Alright, so plays that Garbo Paxson. And Trash Lanch. Alright, so this is Espeon Garboder. Oh boy. Um. I don't think it's a terrible matchup, but it's not a good matchup. Kind of. You can never really, really tell. Alright, grab that wonder tag. Alright, uh, Cynthia, sure. And is he just gonna go ahead and play it? Yes, he is. Alright. So just hits us for 60. Nothing too much. Uh, capture the Glossopod. We could take an early knockout on one of the Garbs. Potentially. That wouldn't be bad, actually. Straight away an Acer roll up deck. Odd. Ooh, that's not good. Beating 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So we can hit him for 120, but then he's gonna counter knockout. But then we can counter knockout. And then he's gonna come in and hit me for uh, a little bit of damage. Say hello back. Always be polite, guys. Politeness is key. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay. Oh boy, 15 whole seconds. I think we're just gonna invasion in and pass, because I need to uh, set up some things. He's just kind of sitting there, chilling. Cynthia. All right. So having three garbs in play is kind of interesting for him. We're troubleshooting two garbs. What I need to start doing now is applying pressure to him because he has all the time in the world right now to get things set up and I do not like that.
Hmm. I think I'll use my up as Espion. Then just bring it to Zora. I got a plan, guys. Don't worry. I'm not that crazy. Trade away the N. Floatstone on that. Hmm. Then beating him. Alright, I got a plan, guys. This is his only attacker right now, besides Tauros, which cannot hit for a lot right now. So, if I can knock out this, he will most likely counter knock out that, if he can. Uh, psychic, 30 damage, times the amount of energy, so, wait, 60, 70, that's hitting 120. Look at that, guys. He can't even knock me out. Oh boy. Um, I think what he's trying to do is bring up Tauros after and knock that out. But by that time, I need to find... Hmm. We're gonna Acer Roll of the Active. Bring up the bench Zorua. Evolve and attach to that. And then bench that. And then look at that, we just got a fully healed Zorark. And we will trade the heavy ball because we have both guys in play. And we hit a sick orb, which is good. And then we can, uh, beating knockouts. Alright guys, so, we got the choice band on the prizes. That's very helpful. Uh, because now we can counter knock out the, um... Hmm, that's actually a tough decision. I think I'll just do the Zorua. And uh, then we could counter knock out that Tauros with uh, Crossing Cut. And then we'll be down to two prizes. Unless he somehow knocks it out this turn, but I don't know if he even can. Yeah, he just brings it to the Alright, I'm fine with that. A choice band on that. Attach grass to that. Trust him, the floor arc. Second crossing cut GX. <laughs> Alright guys, if any of you guys ever play against me, do not concede until the end. Do not concede. We got the win, but I hate it when people concede on me. Anyways guys, I'm going to end the video there, we're just nearing the 20 minute mark, so it's getting a little bit too long, but anyways guys, that was the battle, I'm sorry that he had to concede, uh, he wasn't going to win anyways, because uh, I'm just such a good Pokemon player, I'm kidding, but um, yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, um, definitely stay tuned for more videos on this channel by clicking that subscribe button and turning on those notifications, and don't forget to drop a like down below, because I really appreciate that, and it helps me out a lot. And uh, yeah, so I guess that's it. So peace.